Hello there, welcome to IGTV this Friday afternoon for a run through of all of the data and company news releases to watch out for next week, which could move and shake the markets. It's now less than two weeks until the EU referendum, and much like this week, debates surrounding how the British public will vote on June the 23rd will most likely dictate market sentiment. But it's not all about Brexit, although sometimes it often feels like it, doesn't it? Other global news awaits us, so let's get to it. We're going to start with China because that will dominate Monday there. We've also got oil stats to come out as well. On Tuesday, it's a slightly busier day, but we're going to begin with Australia data just there with the NAB Business Confidence, Japan, UK CPI, PPI, RPI as well, Eurozone Unemployment, US Retail Sales and US Business Inventories. On Wednesday, again, we're going to start in Australia, France inflation to look out for, UK unemployment rate, Eurozone trade balance, US industrial production, US EIA crude oil inventories and US Fed interest rate decision. Of course, we're going to analyze that in just a second. This is a crucial one as well, the Bank of Japan interest rate decision and lower down there is the UK, the Bank of England interest rate decision. So it seems it's all about the central banks next week. Finishing off the week, Slightly quieter there with Canada inflation and the US housing starts too. So as you saw there, lots of central bank action uh, to look forward to. We've got Josh Mahoney here who's going to explain it all and how it's going to play out into the markets. I suggest we start with the Bank of Japan because that's probably the most likely to make moves. And I say this because the Bank of Japan, the deputy governor, has said that uh, decisive monetary policy is absolutely essential. Those were his words. What do you make of that? Well, there's one thing you can't really accuse them of, and that's being indecisive because they've actually, you know, continued to see one thing after another. Now we're seeing the sales tax pushed back. You know, ultimately, they want to do everything that they can to try and really raise inflation, but it's not working. Mm -hmm. And we've seen them constantly ease and lowering rates, but it's not actually making that much of a difference in terms of the Japanese economy. Unfortunately, they're probably going to have to be reliant on the, uh, oil prices rising. That's probably going to be the thing that's going to help them at the end of the day. Nevertheless, you know, there is the potential for actually in the same way as this week we saw at the RBNZ, there was the potential for them to cut. And despite them not cutting, we saw a massive move in terms of appreciation in terms of New Zealand dollar. So that potential and the fact that people don't necessarily know which way it's going to go, that's where you see the volatility. So I think we're going to see the same kind of thing in terms of Japanese yen this week. So if we look at the daily chart on the yen, you can see that we've returned back on trend in the last, say, week and a bit, where essentially we did see this long protracted rally, but ultimately the downtrend played out and we saw this sell off once more. Now, that would point towards a move back down to 105.55. Hasn't necessarily happened yet. And if you look at the shorter term time frame on the hourly, we can see that actually, whilst we had this falling wedge, which is a bullish pattern, we then got a breakout towards the upside. And so there is a potential that we could see some sort of bounce in the near future. There's no guarantee that it's going to sell off straight away to 105.55. Um, but I do think that that's where we're going to end up. And I do think we're going to be pushing to new lows. So it's going to be interesting to see whether we manage to break lower. The key level here is 106.43. If we manage to get below there, I think we'll quite swiftly get to that 105.55. If we don't, then there is a potential for us to sort of mess about for a bit and see a bit of consolidation in the meanwhile. OK, a bank that's probably less likely to do anything is the FOMC. Now, had we have had this conversation maybe two weeks ago, it might have played out quite differently. But obviously, we know what the markets are like. There's plenty of volatility at the moment and things are different. Yes, yeah, certainly. I guess it's all down to that payrolls number. And as soon as we saw that number, I mean, quite honestly, 000. I mean, exactly. It was just ridiculous. I understand how it can miss estimates by 10 or 20 or mm. 30. But like 150, you know, it doesn't really make any sense to me, quite honestly. But, you know, whilst Janet Yellen said that, you know, one, one bad number doesn't make a bad economy, well, quite honestly, in the lead up to that, the numbers weren't particularly great either. You know, the, the sort of numbers have been sub 200 for a number of months now. So it's pretty much a no-go whatsoever in terms of a June hike. But, of course, there's still the potential. There was still talk of them wanting to do something in the summer, and that means something in July. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see how they sort of prepare the ground. Are they going to essentially say, actually, you know, we might see something in the future and be quite wishy-washy about it? Or are they still going to be quite, quite sort of obvious with their, their reference to July? So that's probably going to be the only thing that people are going to be really looking out for. It's going to be all about the rhetoric, not necessarily about whether they make a decision to cut or not. Um, if we look at the dollar basket, this has been one of the biggest 
stories of the last week really because we saw that massive deterioration off the back of that payrolls number and now we're starting to see that come back into strength for the back end of this week so we've you know this has been really dictating the FX market uh, you can see that largely we, we are sort of turning from oversold back up above that 20 mark and crossing in a bit more of a bullish manner so there is the potential for a resurgence now if I take it out to the weekly time frame just to give a sort of wider perspective you can see that largely we've been seeing these big bounces from around about this support level you can see we had trend line support coming into play that long lower shadow and therefore given the fact that we saw that big bounce and the fact that in the past we've seen these wide swings really big moves there was a potential, especially given the fact that we've managed to break up above 95.22, there's a potential that this sell-off that we saw off the payrolls could essentially just be a retracement of this move that we've seen here. And these horizontal levels here are important lows that we've seen in the past. So it's interesting that we've come down to this 93.40 and started to rally. Um, there is the potential that we could see this push on um, and start looking towards that 94.74, 95.22 uh, as near-term resistance points because, yes, they're not necessarily going to hike immediately, but they are going to hike sooner than anywhere else. So there is still a US dollar strength story uh, likely to come back into play, I think. And certainly more likely, I would say, than the Bank of England, which we're also expecting to meet. And again, it's about the rhetoric, isn't it? We're not expecting any action. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Bank of England ultimately are sort of they're just waiting for the Fed to do something, quite mm -hmm. honestly. You know, they want to see the Fed really push on a lot more before they're going to actually move. Yes, we've seen one hike in terms of the Fed. That didn't particularly play out too well. Um, so that they're going to essentially wait off. I don't think we're going to see anything for the time being. They're not going to be too hawkish because of the fact that we've got this whole EU referendum looming over the economy. So really? Apparently so, yeah. We, no one's mentioned it in the office. but. Um, Looking at cable, this is a very interesting one at the moment because it's breaking below a really crucial support level, 143.48. And that level has largely underpinned price um, for the last two months. Now, we've also got the 100-day SMA there. And this is partly a story in terms of the strength of the US dollar coming back, back into play. But I think largely this is the fact that polls keep coming out in favour of a leave. And that is quite an unexpected development really and um, so people are starting to get a little bit more worried than we were say two weeks ago when actually the, it, it was coming out pretty much uh, all in favor of remain so this is going to be a very interesting chart to be watching out for what i would say is that watch out for this 143.48 once it's passed through it sometimes you find resistance on these previous support levels and we've also got this neckline that you can see previous support turns into resistance would be very interesting to see if we came back down to that level to see if we could get another bit of support for another bounce but ultimately i am bullish if i take it out to the weekly time frame you can see that uh, or actually the monthly time frame you can see in terms of historical levels we're very much oversold these levels whenever we come back down to, to this region we always see the market bottom out of course we haven't seen it really spike away or jump away in too much of a, a solid manner because of the fact that we have this eu referendum looming over us but i think in say two three t weeks time if and obviously it's a big if if we decide to remain i think we'll see a very strong appreciation in terms of cable so i think this in the future will be seen as a very cheap area for cable but for the time being, we've broken this, uh, we're breaking through this really key support level. So it looks like we could see further losses yet in terms of the short term. OK, thanks, Josh. And if you are interested in the cable and learning more, we've got the Trade of the Week show coming up. Watch out for that because we are going to be talking about the cable in that one. Now, let's move on and talk corporate news because actually next week it's rather slim. There's not a great deal going on. It seems like the fashion retailers are dominating the agenda. And actually on Monday, there's nothing of significance. So we'll start on Tuesday. We've got First Group coming up, the UK-based transport operator there. It's actually having a bit of rivalry with Virgin at the moment. And we've got Cress Nicholson there and Ted Baker we're also going to chat about too. That's coming up with a trading statement next week. House builder Berkeley Group will report full-year earnings to the city. Now, house builders in general began the month on shaky foundations thanks to fears of a UK exit from the European Union and, of course, slowing house price growth as well. Um, We've also got more shoe love there. We've got Jimmy Choo, which we're also going to talk about too. Thursday is a really busy day, though. Certainly the busiest one of the week with Poundsland there, the, the budget store. Darty as well, the electrical retailer. And we've got Mulberry as well, which I'm a huge fan of. I love their bags. 
So as I say, a lot of retailers there, a lot of fashion going on. And just want to mention that Friday, there's nothing of significance to watch out for. So let's get stuck in. We've got Josh still here with us. Josh, where do you want to start then with this one here? So as I say, there's lots of retailers going on next week, isn't there? Um, what's your pick? Um, I guess we, we've got some key levels on some of these charts and that's why I've sort of brought them up. So the first one I wanted to look at is Ted Baker, not okay. necessarily been doing all too well um, recently. If I bring it out to the weekly time frame, you can see we've been selling off quite heavily uh, throughout 2016 so far. The question mark is when is this going to come to an end? Um, I do think they're a great brand. Um, I think that there's substantial fears in the sector and the sort of retail sector surrounding what's happening in terms of China because that's a big growth market for them. But in terms of domestically, I think they're relatively cheap. Their earnings, price to earnings uh, ratio is relatively low. And therefore, I think that we, in terms of a long term picture, uh, are actually looking at a decent price. Nevertheless, the interesting thing here is a chart. And you can see on the weekly time frame, if we've been selling off in the way that we have done in the last, say, three, four months, there's not too much to stand in the way at the moment. You can see on the daily time frame, we've got key support level here around about 22.89. We've also got one just below there around about 22.54. So it's about whether we can break through that level. If we can do, then we're quite likely to see another leg lower for Ted Baker, despite the fact that I think ultimately um, it's a decent buy. So it looks like we're going to see further downside until we actually start to break some key levels on this occasion, 24.92. If we get a close up above there, that will start to look bullish once more. Until that happens, we're likely to see further selling. Mm -hmm. And Ted Baker, I suppose, is in a difficult position because it's not luxury and it's not budget either. It's somewhere in the middle. But something that is luxury is, of course, Jimmy Choo. Um, it's a high brand ch uh, company, shoe company. And I want to mention as well, it's in a bit of trouble at the moment, isn't it, about where it sits on the FTSE 200. It could move into the third tier. Yeah. And look, you know, this, this is an absolute play on the whole China story. And that's, you know, massive at the moment for a company like this. Ultimately, even if they came out with big, num big numbers, and they have done in the past, they've come out with better numbers than people expected, but we've still seen selling. And that, I think, is largely to do with the fact that people don't necessarily want to be sort of in that Chinese region at the moment because of this massive slowdown that we're seeing at the moment. Interestingly enough, we also see Chinese retail sales coming out really early in the morning on Monday. So, of course, that's going to have a knock-on effect in terms of the perception of, of how a company like this is going to be able to perform in the future. So, mm -hmm. it's going to be a big week in terms of Jimmy Choo. The interesting thing here is the fact that we've come down to this massive level. You can see here around about 99 or 100. Essentially, previously, a really big level of support. We can see we did try and sell into that previously and saw a massive big rally from there. So this is going to really dictate play for next week. We get a close below there, we could see another big leg lower. If we don't and we can see uh, some further long lower shadows or lower wicks, we could see a decent bounce from here. So I think Jimmy Choo is coming up to a pivotal level um, and with that Chinese retail sales number, but also uh, their earnings coming out, it's going to be a very interesting week for them. Mm, and it could spike like their heels. Whee! All right, let's move <laughs> on joke. and talk about first group because terrible Jake, terrible, awful. <laughs> um, he told me to say it. Um, they're basically rivaling Virgin at the moment. They're trying to do cheaper tickets going up to Edinburgh. What's this company all about at the moment? Do you think it is all about reducing those costs of the tickets? Because everyone wants a cheaper train fare, don't they? Yeah, I think that's one of the big problems that this country has, quite honestly. I think that people want relatively affordable travel but they don't necessarily want to actually get on the bus half the time you know mm. and, and takes longer exactly yeah i don't like sitting on the bus for like four or five hours but ultimately you know first group you know can do both of that they've got their business over in america they've got their business in the uk if they can take any of the business off of the likes, likes of virgins then you would think they'd be in a decent place and we can see that in terms of share price the last say four months you can see this really substantial recovery coming into play now the interesting thing about this chart is the fact that we've come down to this really crucial support level that we can see here 105.5 now ultimately this could create a double top formation and if we're talking about next week then this is going to be the level that's likely to really dictate the state of, state of play if we see close below there then we could see a projected target of the same height of this formation projected lower so if we take the height of it you can see it's around about four you take that lower that could take us to around about 102 so we could see a decent move lower but even if we did see a move lower it would still be within this uptrend that we've seen over the last three to four months and therefore it would still be a decent buying opportunity so I do think in terms of the sort of medium term picture, we're going to see further gains, but 
in the short term, 105.5, we get a close below there, we could see a more protracted retracement lower. Josh, thanks a lot for all of that. We do appreciate it. So next week, it's all about the central banks and the, the action or inaction that we might indeed see. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic weekend. Goodbye.